Module 4, Expressions, Linear Equations, and Linear Inequalities. This is section 4.9, Percent and Mixture Problem Solving. Regardless of the type of pro word problem you're working on, you want to use these four steps to try to solve any word problem. The first step is the hardest part, and that's understanding the problem. You may have to read and reread the problem a few times. Select a variable to represent your unknown. We use x a lot, but it does not have to be x. It may be helpful to construct a drawing, especially if they're talking about geometric shapes like squares or rectangles. And then think about what kind of solution are you expecting to have? How big or how small do you think that number should be? So that way you have something to check your answer against. Then you'll translate whatever that problem that you read was into an equation, solve it, and then you'll interpret the result. Not only will you check it to make sure that's right and check it against what you thought you might have, but you'll also want to interpret it to state your conclusion so that it makes sense to the rest of the question. We're going to start out with percent problems. When you're looking at percent problems, they often sound like three different ones, but they're always going to use the same format. The amount, the, the percentage amount that you're looking for is equal to the percent times the base. You may have also learned another way to solve this type of equation, which is is over of equals percent over 100. And you can solve it using a proportion. These two things say the same exact thing, just one uses decimals and one uses fractions. Make sure that you write your percent as a decimal. So you've got to change that percent to a decimal. Your base is the whole. So that's the everything. And the fraction part of the equation, it's the of. The amount is the part, that's a, the piece that you're looking for. And then the uh, fractional part type of the, this equation, that's the is. When you don't know the amount, you're going to multiply the percent times the base, which is that whole amount that you're looking for. This would really look like 0 0.10 times 500. If you don't know the base, you're going to wind up having to divide both sides by the decimal. So this would be 50 equal to 0 0.10 and where you'd have to divide both sides by a 0 0.10. If you don't know the percent, this may be the easiest one, uh, then your smaller number is almost always the amount, unless you're looking for a percent that's greater than. If you have to guess, <laughs> the smaller number is usually the amount. Uh, and the base is the everything. And here we'll have to divide both sides by the 500. When you're done, if you're looking for a percent, you're going to have to change that number to a percent. Let's look at a couple examples. What is 9% of 65? This is where is over of equals percent over 100 becomes in, comes in handy because you know the first thing you want to look for is the percent. If you have a percent sign, then you know where that's going to go. That's a 9. Then you're going to look for what's next to the is and the of. It sometimes can get a little bit jumbled, but it says of 65. The what is with the is, and the what is the variable. Somebody's got to be an x, and so there it is. If you're looking for a what is, that's a part. You're looking for a part. So this is going to be n equals 9% times 65. Of course, you can't multiply it by a percent, so it has to be 0 0.09 times 65. 0 0.09 times 65 is 5.85. So 5.85 is 9% of 65. How could we have estimated that? Well, an easy way is to use a 10% rule. If you move the decimal over one spot to the left, you'll get a 10%. So 10% of 65 is 6.5. 10% uh, of 500 is 50, because you would just move that always one spot to the left if you want a 10%. 9% is less than 10%, 5.85 is less than 6.5, so this looks pretty good. 36 is 6% 6 
of what? So here's my what, that's the x. It's with the of, so if I'm talking about amount is equal to percent times the base, the base is the of, so that's my x. Percent is percent, but if I'm using an equation, I need to change it to a decimal. That's the other nice part of using is over of. You don't have to change it. You can just put in the 6. The of would be an x down here, which leaves me with an is 36. So 36 would go up there. Now I'll have to divide both sides by 0 0.06. 36 divided by 0 0.06 is 600. If I wanted to solve using a fraction, I would do something called cross multiply. So it's a 36 times 100, which is 3600, equals 6 times x, which is 6x. I know I did the right way by getting the diamond in the middle. All right, so it's bottom to top, and then you drop it. Divide both sides by 6, and you can see that you'll get the same answer. Either method is completely fine. 24 is what percent of 44? So if I'm talking about amount is equal to percent times my base, the of is the base, so that's 144. I don't know my percent. That's going to have to be an x, and so this is 24. I'll have to divide 144 on both sides. So I have x is equal to whatever 24 divided by 144 is. And that's going to be a 0.16, and that's repeating. So it goes on for a while. I'm going to need to change this uh, to a percent by moving its two spots to the right. So I'm talking about 16.7% if I round to the nearest tenth. So 24 is... 16.7% of 144. Now, 16.7% is less than 20%. If 10% of 144 is 14.4, then 2 times that, right, 20% would have to be 28.8. Well, 28.8 is bigger than the 24 and 20% is bigger than the 16.7%, so it kind of makes sense. If I wanted to use the is over of for this one, I would have 24 over 144 equals x over 100. Cross multiply, I get 2400. Here's my diamond is equal to 144x. And you see that we have almost the same thing that when we go to divide by the 144, but I have these two extra zeros. That's kind of nice because when you're done, you find this top part that already has the percent. So you would get a 16.7 when you round to the nearest tenth. You don't have to then change it to a percent. You see percents more often in the real world when you're talking about discount or markup problems. So let's say Mark takes Peggy at the dinner. He spends $66. He wants to leave a nice tip, 20%. How much can he afford to spend on the meal? Uh, he has $66. So if we let M be the cost of the meal, he's going to have to pay for the whole meal, 100% of the meal, right? But then whatever this value is here, he's going to have to add on the tip, which he wants 20% of the meal price. So 20% of whatever my meal price is would be another 20%. When I add these two values together, I need it to be no more than $66, because that's all I have. If you don't see a number out front, that's a 1. Well, a 1n plus a 0.2n is a 1.2n, which kind of makes sense when you think about it, right? You're paying, this as a percent is 120%. You're paying for 100% of the meal plus 20%. I need that to be equal to, or certainly not more than, 66. Divide both sides by the 1.2, and you find that n is $55. So the cost of the meal needs to be $55 because 
of 55, if you were to solve it that way, is going to be an 11. So 55 for the meal, 11 for the tip, right? 100% of the meal, 20% extra for the tip. We can look at a discount. Julie buys a leather sofa. It's on sale for 35% off of the original price. The original price was 1200 How much did she save? What was the discount? And what did she wind up paying? So discount is whatever that discount rate is times the list price. So she's saving 35%. So that's my discount rate. And I'm going to multiply that by 1200 0.35 times 1200 is $420. So she saved four hundred and twenty dollars, right? That's how much is coming off. If I take thirty-five percent off, that means I'm really going to subtract four hundred and twenty dollars. So how much did I pay? Well, it's just twelve hundred minus the four twenty, and I get seven hundred and eighty dollars. That's how much she paid for her couch. If you're out and you're shopping and you don't want to do this in two steps, you can say, well, if I'm taking thirty-five percent off, you can leave sixty-five percent on right I'm that's the part that's what what I'm paying for if I'm not paying for 35 percent of it because it's coming off I think about it as 65 percent on because ultimately I don't care how much I'm saving I care about how much I'm going to have to pay I really have to pay 65 percent of that original price and 65 percent of 1200 well that's going to be the 780 dollars so depending on what your question is you can look at it from two different ways Let's look at increased problems and decreased problems. So a percent of increase and a percent of decrease is different than discount and markup. What a percent of increase and a percent of decrease says is what's my new amount and what's the old amount and how what was that percent of change? If I wanted to talk about how much more or how much less the new value is, I want to compare that to the old value using a percent, like I make 20% more at this job than I did the last job, or I'm paying 36% less in taxes in, in this state compared to the other state. Here's an example of percent of increase. Cost of a certain car uh, increased from 16,000 last year to 17,280 this year. What's the percent of increase? So the amount of increase, and it will be decrease as well, is the new amount minus the original amount. So now the car is $17,280. It used to be the original amount was 16000 So I have a price increase of $1,280. That's the amount of increase. If I wanted to think about this as what percent is 1280 of the original amount of 16000 so I'm talking about amount of increase, the 1280 compared to the original amount. And when you find your decimal, you make it a percent by moving it two spots to the right. So the car's cost increased by 8%. You can think of it as new minus old over old. No. <laughs> percent of decrease is really the same thing, except your amount of increase, which was positive here, is going to turn into an amount of decrease. So instead of having a positive number in your numerator, you're going to have a negative number. Percent of decrease. Patrick weighed 285 pounds two years ago. After a diet, he got his weight down to 171. What is the percent of decrease in his weight? So you're going to say new amount, what, what does he weigh now? 171. And then you have the original amount, which was 285. And 171 minus 285 means he lost, right? There's a negative. He's down 114 pounds. The amount of decrease is going to be a negative. Don't let that throw you off because we're going to do the same thing. And you just compare it to what the original was. The original was 285. Negative 114 divided by a 285 gives you a negative 0.4. Well, as a percent, 0.4 is 40%. The negative lets you know that's a decrease, right? Because it's going down. If that was positive, it would be an increase. So he decreased by 40%. Right? His weight decreased by 40%. You don't have to say a negative 40%. You can say a decrease by 40%. Now for the 
the toughest questions and those are the mixture questions and it's really helpful to draw a table for these. The owner of a candy store is mixing candy worth six dollars per pound uh, with candy that's worth eight dollars a pound. She wants to make 144 pounds of candy so imagine you have this bucket and you're dumping in some six dollar candy and then you're dumping in some eight dollar candy after you're done dumping in all the candy, we want this to be 144 pounds worth of candy. But the sticker I want to put on it, like when I start scooping it into little bags, is I want the little price tag to say $7.50. So I have to think about how much candy should I put in that's worth $6 and how much candy should I put in that's worth $8 so that I can still make money, right? Like, I can't put a whole bunch of $8 candy in and only a little bit of $6 candy and charge $7.50 because it's gonna co I'm going to lose money. And if I make the candy bags with a lot of $6 candy and not enough $8 candy, people are going to feel like, like it's not worth buying the candy bag that's overpriced. So I need to think about how many pounds of one candy I need to put in. So I'm going to let N be the number of candy, the pounds of the $6 candy. Now you could easily make that the $8 candy, but I'm going to pour the $6 candy in first. I don't know how much candy of the N I want to put in for the $6 candy. I'm going to add in the $8 candy and I want this to add up to 144 but I can't use another variable. I don't want to use like X and Y because I can only solve for one variable at a time. Well let's say I put in 40 pounds of this then that would have to be 104 pounds of this right because that's what's going to get me up to 144. Well where did this come from? So well, I already put in 40 I want it to max out at 144 so I would subtract that and that's where that would come from. I don't have actually 40, I just have N. So the amount of the $8 candy is 144 minus whatever I put in before. Right, so if you were to simplify this, right, N plus 144 plus a negative N, well, the, the Ns would add out, leaving with 144 equal to 144. So you know you kind of have this, this how much part of the story correct. So I'm going to put in N number of pounds of the $6 candy, which leaves me with 144 minus N pounds of candy. When I add these two together, I'm going to get 144 pounds of candy. Now I want this price of the $7 candy to be $7.50. I know that this is $6 and I know that this is $8. I want to think about, well, what's this value? And I'm going to also think about kind of a double line right here, like this. So if I took all of this candy that I dumped in the bag and it's worth six bucks a pound, if I put in 10 pounds, that would be $60, right? I would say it's this many pounds and this is how much it's worth. So I would know how much money I put in in pounds. This $8 candy that I put in some unknown amount, that's worth $8. So that's how much this costs. When I jumble it all up, I need it to be equal to 144 times 7. 144 times 750 is 1,080. So you're talking about a lot of candy right? It's a very expensive bag of candy, so you want to make sure it's marked correctly. Well, now I can solve this. It's this column that you want to solve. It's this value of this candy plus this that I dumped in and made this bag. So I have all the candy I dumped in and how much it cost me for the $6 candy. And then I did that with the $8 candy, right? So this is all the stuff that I dumped in. This is how much it cost me. At the end, I want it to be equal to this much. Distribute. 144 times a, an 8 is 1152 times a negative n is a negative 8n. Combine like terms. I got a 6 and a negative 8. That leaves me with a negative 2n. 
I'm going to subtract the 1152 from both sides. So don't panic when you see negatives. They tend to take care of themselves. I have negative 2n because that adds to a 0 equal to a negative 72. When you divide by a negative 2, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So if she needs to use 36 pounds of the $6 candy, which means then if I use already 36 pounds and I want to max out at 144, I need to add in 108 of the $8 candy. You can check it by plugging it back in. Do these two numbers actually give me this value over here? And it does. A table really helps to organize the data. I'm going to go back to the table for a minute. You may have your N here at the price uh, oh, up top here. You could have your N down here. So the N doesn't always have to be over in the pound section. But this is how you always want to set it up. It's basically a, a how much and, and what is it worth to you. You multiply this way. But you think about these little sections as their own little equations. And that's how you do mixture and percent problems.